Hello, future people. Welcome to Getting Tabled. I'm Jason the Bruce, and today we're going to be doing a bit of a hobby video because I think it's about time that I did a proper update on my crude army. People that have been watching the channel for a while will know that when the crew was announced, I was extremely excited. I am someone that's been a big fan of the crew for a long time. I'm someone that's very publicly said that they wanted a crew army for a long time. Granted, I don't have a huge platform. I'm not suggesting that Games Workshop was listening to me. I doubt they know I exist. But I was someone that was very, very happy about this. Um, I'm also someone that hasn't played 40k for a very long time, quite deliberately, because I didn't enjoy the game. Uh, but this brought me back to 40k. Now, to be fair, I haven't played a new game of this yet. But I am excited to when I'm ready. I'm deliberately taking my time with this because, again, people of the channel may know this already, I'm actually in the middle of developing a game of my own at the moment, and that takes most of my hobby time. Everything else, hobby-wise, that I'm doing at this stage, I am treating as distractions from Entropy City uh, to help reduce burnout and stuff like that. So, this is something I've really, really been enjoying. Um, I haven't probably done as much hobby as I should have been doing, uh, but the hobby that I have done, I have really been enjoying. So, really, 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 really excited for this. Um, I'm going to go through everything I've done so far. Not everything I'm showing you today has been finished. Some of them are very unfinished. Uh, but it's just to kind of show you how things are, talk a little bit about the choices that I'm making and the experiences that I'm having with the kits and so forth. Um, let's get into it. So down here we have a rough selection of the crew that I have so far. Down the front here, we have some of the original Crute Carnivore squads. Uh, I assume these all came from the same kit. I don't remember exactly. Uh, some people may remember that these are the original test models that I was using. Trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So this is all speed paint that's been used, essentially. Um, with some highlights in some standard oranges later on. And this was all just to kind of see how I felt about it. These are unfinished. Uh, the bellies were untouched because that's part of their original paint scheme. As you can see from here. So this is originally how I was painting these pre-pandemic. Um, I've always been a huge fan of the crude from very, very early on in my painting hobby. Um... I started rebuying crude at some point with an intention to do them for Kill Team, despite the fact that at the time I had been told that they were pretty much garbage for Kill Team. And this is kind of the direction I was going at the time. My plan at the time was to kind of have them all kind of be kind of dull and then their quills to be like the exciting part of them. When the crude models were announced, I did say that I'd been waiting over a decade for them. And I wasn't exaggerating. Again, I've been a big fan for the Crute for a long time. This is the Crute character that came in the Blackstone Fortress game. I purchased this on the secondary market because at the time, I couldn't buy the game. Also, I wasn't really interested in the game. I just wanted the model because characters for Crute didn't really exist as such. And this was kind of the only one we'd had for a long time. So I had to have it. Uh, this is still painted in the old scheme. I, I, I still intend to convert this to the new one. Uh, that will obviously happen at a later stage. And so we get to our original Kill Team box. You will see... That I've actually purchased multiple boxes of this at this stage. 
Uh, some of you may know this story, some of you may not. I only covered it very, very briefly. But essentially, I purchased my original Kill Team box, and this character was missing pieces. Was it this character? Yes, no, it was this character that was missing pieces. So I had to return this. I tried contacting Games Workshop. They told me I had to go back to the store that I had purchased it from, which I did. Uh, and the store itself had no problems whatsoever. But Games Workshop, having changed their policies recently, took, I believe it was six weeks to replace my original box. I was very, very, very patient and got very, very annoyed before the end of it. None of my annoyance was taken out on the store. I know it wasn't the store's problem. I mean, sorry, not the store. It was the store's problem. It wasn't the store's fault. Uh, it was their problem because they had to listen to me questioning whether it was back yet every few, every so many days, which they were wonderful about because obviously they knew I was waiting and so on and so forth. Um, in the end, obviously, I ended up purchasing a second box because ultimately I was going to need them anyway. And I kind of wanted to continue with my hobby. This is actually the character from that second box that I had bought, which I built up again and then started painting. And when I eventually got my original box back, I built the character to be the other version of the character. Now you can see I've already started painting these up differently so that you can tell them apart. I've also deliberately chosen different parts as well, again, so that you can tell them apart. I actually really like both of the standard moulds for this. Um, I do believe that you could still convert this. Like If you're someone that was into green stuffing, you could obviously do more with this. I don't have green stuffing skills, so it's not really something I can do. But changing out his weapons to alternate ones wouldn't be that difficult. Maybe bending the arm and then re-green stuffing it could be done but even something as simple as changing that head would be very very simple with these kits i very quickly decided that i wanted to bring back my teal teal was a color that i really well teal or turquoise blue green uh, is a color that i was really enjoying with my bot war despite having kind of not really looked at bot war for a long time uh the paint the paint job itself is what inspired this. Obviously, I'm going for a more traditional paint scheme with this rather than the um, cartoony effect I'd done on the other one. I'm genuinely really proud of this. This cape took three or four different paint jobs while I was trying to figure out how to do it. I originally had this done so that it was the opposite of the skin, so that it was the orange skin with the blue-green quills, and it just didn't look right. I then tried to change it so that it was a black with some coloured quills, like it had been tanned. Uh, and then I just went for a standard leather with quills. So it's kind of looked like it's lost its colour over time. Maybe it's been tanned to look like this quite deliberately. I don't know. But the other thing I... When I was doing my different paint schemes, one thing I noticed... So these are all different speed paint colors I think from memory one of these was actually redone a second time to make it look more closer but you'll notice the actual n none of these colors are exactly the same these two are close but he is very much a different color I quickly decided that I was going to run with that so in the Army Painter Air Paints wall paint line, I purchased every single version of the green blue colour I could. So, with my Crutox, this is very heavily down into the blue spectrum for the turquoise. Obviously, it's been highlighted up. Again, this is one that I'm very proud of. This is not finished, I'm not trying to suggest that it is. And then everything else is kind of 
bronzes. This necklace is probably going to end up being a steel. Um, and then everything else is kind of just muted tones. So, because I want the, the the skin and the quills to be what stands out. Um, the beaks I've kind of all done down into this bony color for a similar sort of reason. I want it to stand out more. I originally had this as a lighter shade of the skin in each example, and I just didn't like it. Uh, it kind of looked odd, so I've kind of changed the color of it on a, all of them very deliberately. Um, I'm not entirely happy with this one yet. It still needs to be highlighted up a bit more. Like I said, this is not finished. This is another example of just how easy it is to do these kits looking differently. This is literally exactly the same kit. In theory, the only thing that's different is the head on the Krutox, right? I have actually given a different head to the shooter as well, and basically all I've really done is angle it differently. But you'll also notice, I haven't actually angled the shoulders right on the Krut model here. It doesn't quite come back all the way. So that one's correct. This one is, and because of how I've angled it, it's kind of changed the angle of the gun. Now, this was done deliberately to help make it stand out more, because ultimately I will end up with three of these, and I kind of want all three of them to look different. So that was just another way of kind of sharpening that angle just a little bit more. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm really happy with how that's turned out, honestly. Well, I really am. Um, I've been deliberately changing up these tones quite deliberately. Um, you'll also notice I have the tones on these two very differently. That skin tone there is the same that I've used on the Krutox uh, Rampages. So these are supposed to be younger versions of the Krutox that are kind of still very uh, brash and headstrong and eager to, to run in and they kind of take advantage of that. And so I've kind of tried to make it look like the evolution of their skin as they get older is kind of what I've tried to go there. Oh, again, this is not finished. Um, but I'm really happy with how this is turning out so far. This is actually a speed paint. So I apologize from the podcast the other week because I didn't actually say what color this was correctly. This is... Oh, I don't know what colour it is, but it, it, this is a colour from the speed paint line. What gives it away is this kind of faded tone here, because it hasn't quite... I've brushed it up against something and accidentally rubbed off some of the paint, annoyingly. These models have been an absolute joy to work with. They, they really have. I've really been enjoying this. I, I have been somewhat slack, if I'm being honest, because... I've kind of been doing multiple projects at the same time, but I've also kind of been giving my attention to other things as well, non-hobby-wise. Um, so, like, whereas I know that there are other people out there that's, like, built multiple of these boxes and have full-on crew armies they're taking to tournaments now, that hasn't been my experience. I'm not going to any tournaments anyway. I'm not actually a fan of the competitive Warhammer scene. Um, this is a project that I do intend to play games with at some point. Uh, but I have zero interest in taking these to tournaments. It's just not what I'm interested in. Uh, Belly-wise, I've been going for a lighter tone of the teal. Just to kind of set it off a little bit. That is actually a different colour again. It does look very similar to this. It's not actually the same colour though. And I've kind of left it a little bit more solid. I do need to highlight that up just a little bit. Uh, but obviously getting in here is a little bit difficult. Um, we also have this lovely gentleman. So this is the build that comes in the box. Uh, again, this guy is not finished. I've kind of started on him, but his skin is not done. And obviously I'm going for the full leathers and everything with the mask. The change I made with this one was to use a regular head. Everything else is still the same. The only other way I've changed them 
is the leather colours have been reversed. It's literally the same colours, but the jacket is the lighter hardened leather, and then this is the dark wood. That is hardened leather, that is dark wood. So these are both speed paints that I've used here. I'm very, very happy with how these have all turned out. I think the thing that I really appreciated most um, with the choice I made in painting is because I'm doing the teal, it's not a skin colour that you see very often. And because teal is not a colour, it's a gradient. Well, teal, turquoise, blue-green. It's not so much a colour, is it a mixture of three or four different colours that kind of get thrown together because they kind of have a similar vibe. In just the triads within the Army Painters air range itself, there was four different gradients in that, each of which had gradients of their own. Um, so I was kind of excited to have different shades of that blue-green skin colour but still have things to make them draw together. And despite the fact that some of these are painted very differently, I still feel like they belong together. I mean, yes, the fact that this clothing and so forth is kind of all painted in a similar manner helps, um, but the quills draw all of them together because that shade of orange kind of works across all four different shades very well. Um, I, I'm really, really enjoying this. Uh, is this the best paintwork that I've ever done? Not all of it. Um, I am very happy with this guy, which is why he's the one I showed off first. He's also the one that's 100% complete. Um, Basing-wise, the basing that I've used on this is Geek Gaming Scenics, uh, and then I've just added little touches of my own. So there's a graft tust on this one. Uh, some of the Crutoxes have little tree stumps that I've painted up underneath them. And I'm going to continue doing that across across the army my plan when i buy the rest of the stuff um the rest of the crew releases have come out in australia now they weren't out at the time of recording on our last podcast i definitely intend to buy that chameleon looking thing which um its name escapes me right now i'm at this stage because that's not specifically a crude thing i'm tempted to try and paint that differently i'd been considering actually kind of having like a green top half and a blue underbelly, um, kind of hinting at obviously the crew that owns it, but then obviously distinctively showing that it's a different creature. Uh, that's probably something I would have to try with an airbrush. Uh, I do have an airbrush. Uh, none of these have actually been airbrushed. This has all been done by hand. Uh, well, by the, the undercoat, I suppose, but this has all been hand painted mostly traditionally painted as well there's a couple i did point out that i'd done with speed paints but most of this has been done by hand because i've been trying to take my time and actually enjoy doing something of a higher detail again um i think i would try the airbrush if my idea with the chameleon works it may not uh and if that's the case if i'm using an airbrush it's nice and thin so i can kind of go over it in a different way. Um, but that's... I haven't even purchased that kit yet. I'm probably not going to purchase that until I finish what I have. Uh, I still have 20 um, Kroot Warriors that I need to build up. I'm deliberately not building them until I paint the other ones. Uh, and I have three more Rampages to build up as well, which, again, I'm not going to paint up until... because I just don't want a massive pile... Um, because then it'll just become a pile of shame that I don't finish. I want to actually get this to a finished state. So I'm trying to do my hobby smart, I guess, um, and not overwhelm myself, which is a habit I'm really bad with. Uh, I'm just, I'm trying to take things in steps and be better with my hobby. But personally, I think Games Workshop have really hit it out of the park with these models. There are no weak points from a modeling perspective the 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 models are all gorgeous they're just absolutely stunning all of them they're really 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 pretty models and they're wonderful models to paint for pretty much any skill level like 
I'm not the most advanced painter in the world. There are painters out there that are much better than me. Uh, but I'm very proud with some of the stuff that I'm pulling out on this. Um, it lends itself really nicely. Uh, the one thing I will say in regards to the green-blue spectrum is washing them is a little bit of a challenge. There's not really a teal or a turquoise wash. Uh, what I've been doing is I've been watering down the contrast paints with a standard medium and then using those as a wash and then highlighting back up again. Um, if you're doing that, I would be suggesting not to use the contrast medium. I would use a standard medium just because it... it it helps change how the contrast works a little bit, or at least that's the experience I had. The first time I tried doing this, the the when I watered down the contrast medium, it just made it a weaker version of what the contrast already does, which didn't create a wash. It just made a solid color. Um, so I very quickly had to change that. Um, it's not perfect. The other solution I've had, which I'm still yet to try, um, is a watered down green with a watered down blue one after the other i am thinking that the solution and i need to test this would be two drops of a green wash two drops of a blue wash and then four drops of whatever the medium is that you're choosing to use um i would be testing this on something else i haven't done it at this stage because I don't have a blue wash. Somehow. I, I don't know how that's happened, but either I've lost it at some point, or I've never bought one. Uh, I think it's that I've lost it at some point. Um, I, I don't quite know though how that's happened, but that's on my to-do list. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you would like me to try to put together like a painting tips type thing on teal, um, realistically, uh, Vince, Ren Vince Vantrello has a really good video on, on the colors of that uh, in his hobby cheating line. If you do a search for teal or turquoise on YouTube, you should come across it very easily. Um, otherwise, if people ask in the comments, I will link you through to the video. But uh, Vince Vantrello is very well known on YouTube. I'd be surprised if you can't find his stuff. Um, honestly... Again, I really think the Games Workshop have hit it out of the park with this from a modelling perspective. I know that people have their opinions on the rule set. I don't really have a strong opinion of my own on that. I don't have a problem with it. I'm not a competitive player anyway. But the way that the rules sound, sound fun. Um, but I guess we'll have to see. There we go. That's it. Thank you very much. Subscribe.